Hey tech enthusiasts, welcome back to All About AI Tech, your go-to channel for everything AI. Today, we're diving into the world of Apple and their groundbreaking approach to AI. Stick around because this video is packed with insights you won't want to miss. So, Apple hit an all-time high recently, and guess what? Morgan Stanley just named them a top pick for their incredible AI advancements. Tim Cook has been playing his cards right, and it's paying off big time. Morgan Stanley analysts are saying that this new AI platform from Apple will be the catalyst for a massive upgrade cycle. Only 8% of current iPhone and iPad users will have these AI tools initially, and that's going to have people itching to upgrade. Think about it. Apple's user base is enormous, and the replacement cycle for their devices has stretched to nearly five years. That means a lot of people are ready for new gadgets. Smart move by Apple, right? Apple is doing a stellar job in showcasing everyday AI use cases, making it approachable and, more importantly, monetizable within their ecosystem. That's key to their success. Now, some skeptics were pointing to upgrade fatigue and slowing iPhone growth. Recent hardware releases didn't have the wow factor, feeding into the narrative that Apple's glory days were over. When Apple ended its electric car project earlier this year, it seemed like they were giving up on innovation. But now, we can see it was a strategic move to focus more on AI. Unlike Google and Microsoft, Apple's AI strategy is an extension of their walled garden approach. And this is where things get interesting. Let's look at a historical comparison. Remember the iPod from 20 years ago? It revolutionized how we consumed digital content. Then came the iPhone, which was also late to the market but changed everything. The iPhone redefined the smartphone category, making it the foundation for today's social media landscape. And now, Apple is poised to do it again with AI. Generative AI on Apple's platform is expected to become the base camp for consumers, just like the iPhone did. Imagine the possibilities. Wall Street is buzzing with excitement over Apple's AI direction. But here's the kicker. While this technology is revolutionary, the impact on Apple's business is quite conventional. People will simply buy more iPhones. Sure, it may not be a world-changing paradigm shift, but it's a tried-and-true way to rake in revenue. And that's why Apple's strategy is genius. However, let's not ignore the elephant in the room. There's a lot of controversy around how companies, including Apple, have been using YouTube videos to train their AI tools. Dave Wiskus, the CEO of Nebula, called it theft. He's pretty upset that creators' work is being used without their consent. And he's not alone. Many creators feel this way. The Luther AI, the creators of the dataset used for training, didn't respond to requests for comments on these allegations. Their goal has been to democratize AI development, which is a noble cause, but it doesn't justify using someone else's work without permission. So, how did they do it? By using YouTube subtitles. They converted plain text from videos, often including translations, to train their AI models. The dataset is part of a compilation called The Pile. This included not just YouTube content, but also material from the European Parliament, English Wikipedia, and even emails from the Enron scandal. Quite a mix, right? And it's not just small developers using this data set. Big names like Apple, NVIDIA, and Salesforce have also tapped into it to train their AI models. Documents reveal that Apple used the pile to train OpenELM, a high-profile model they released in April. This was just weeks before they announced new AI capabilities for iPhones and MacBooks. Even companies like Bloomberg and Databricks have been using the pile. So, it's a pretty widespread practice, not just isolated to a few players. Anthropic, another AI maker, has a $4 billion investment from Amazon. They, too, use the pile for training their AI assistant named Claude. Salesforce used the pile for academic and research purposes. Their VP of AI research emphasized that the dataset was publicly available, but questions about safety concerns remain. The dataset contains a lot of profanity and biases against certain genders and religious groups. This raises significant safety concerns. It's not just about the legality, but also about the ethical implications. What does this all mean for us as consumers? We need to push for ethical AI development. Using creators' content without permission is a huge red flag, and it's something we need to be aware of. As always, I'm here to bring you the latest and greatest in AI. Your support means the world to me. Hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with anyone who's passionate about tech and AI. My goal is to build a community where we can all learn and grow together. If you have any suggestions or feedback, drop them in the comments below. Let's make this channel better together.
Stay tuned for more exciting topics coming your way. We've got some awesome tech events lined up that you won't want to miss. Thanks for joining me today, and I can't wait to catch you in the next video. Stay curious, stay informed, and keep exploring the incredible world of AI. Until next time. Dave Wiskus, the CEO of Nebula, called it theft. He's pretty upset that creators' work is being used without their consent. And he's not alone. Many creators feel this way. The Luther AI, the creators of the dataset used for training, didn't respond to requests for comments on these allegations. Their goal has been to democratize AI development, which is a noble cause, but it doesn't justify using someone else's work without permission. So, how did they do it? By using YouTube subtitles. They converted plain text from videos, often including translations, to train their AI models. The dataset is part of a compilation called The Pile. This included not just YouTube content, but also material from the European Parliament, English Wikipedia, and even emails from the Enron scandal. Quite a mix, right? And it's not just small developers using this dataset. Big names like Apple, NVIDIA, and Salesforce have also tapped into it to train their AI models. Documents reveal that Apple used the pile to train OpenELM, a high-profile model they released in April. This was just weeks before they announced new AI capabilities for iPhones and MacBooks. Even companies like Bloomberg and Databricks have been using the pile. So, it's a pretty widespread practice, not just isolated to a few players. Anthropic, another AI maker, has a $4 billion investment from Amazon. They, too, use the pile for training their AI assistant named Claude. Salesforce used the pile for academic and research purposes. Their VP of AI research emphasized that the dataset was publicly available, but questions about safety concerns remain. The dataset contains a lot of profanity and biases against certain genders and religious groups. This raises significant safety concerns. It's not just about the legality, but also about the ethical implications. What does this all mean for us as consumers? We need to push for ethical AI development. Using creators' content without permission is a huge red flag, and it's something we need to be aware of. As always, I'm here to bring you the latest and greatest in AI. Your support means the world to me. Hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with anyone who's passionate about tech and AI. My goal is to build a community where we can all learn and grow together. If you have any suggestions or feedback, drop them in the comments below. Let's make this channel better together. Stay tuned for more exciting topics coming your way. We've got some awesome tech events lined up that you won't want to miss. Thanks for joining me today, and I can't wait to catch you in the next video. Stay curious, stay informed, and keep exploring the incredible world of AI. Until next time.